Good afternoon and welcome to Audio Tree Live. Today is Monday, March 28th, 2016, and we're honored to have with us Lucy Dakis. <laughs> Shorten the exchange, I'll show you mine. You walk away, I'm wearing mine. Had all my sleeve, you're wearing yours, so I can see. But I'll remember your face for years to come. And wonder what you thought about when you got Watching Audio Tree Live, we're in the studio with Lucy Dacus. What's up? Welcome. Thank you guys very much for coming out and performing for us. Thanks for having us. I like that you brought. Do you have a few of those oh, right. mugs, or you just needed two. it to represent? Okay, well, cool. Well, I just I need the tea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. More than anything. What kind of tea is your go-to? Mm. Or you have a few? Paris tea is really good. Oh, I don't know. Wedding that. tea. Oh. I think they're like black teas. Okay. Maybe. Okay, cool. That's just what they call on the box. Yeah, yeah. You just, you just go by whatever yeah. <laughs> whatever the title is. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Paris. Or, okay, cool. Um, so I read that your mother plays piano. Is that kind of how music started in your life? I mean, did Probably. she sit you down and teach you in any way? Or She tried when I was five. Okay. And I was like, no, nope, that's not right. And yeah, I would like, play Im- what I believed was right. Like oh. music theory that I just understood as a five-year-old, <laughs> like against this like full-time pianist right she's like i'm done with this so (laughs) that didn't really work i can't play piano great (laughs) what made you 
I mean, do you think that's a personality trait that remains with you, that you have an understanding of musical theory that others don't, or that you have mm-hmm. a belief that others don't? No way. Yeah. Uh, I looked at Jacob and laughed because <laughs> Jacob's the one of us that like went to school for music. Okay. And um, I know nothing about music. I don't even know what chords I'm playing most of the time. It's like, I think like, I need to hear this sound and I'll yeah, find yeah. it on the string. Sure. Um, so yeah, that superiority is not existent anymore. <laughs> Great. What about others, just to get you guys involved early on, um, parental influence at all, or any other parents who are musicians or showed you music or anything like that? Uh, a lot of our dads were in bands. Um, okay. Tristan, who plays uh, Telecaster over there, uh, both his dad and my dad were in bands um, in Richmond in the 90s um, and s- still are playing all the time. So those were you know, huge influences on us. Cool. Um, and yeah. Also, oh, yeah. Oh, sorry, Jacob. <laughs> you go, man. Justin, you want to go? Oh, no, please, Jacob. Uh, I don't know. Like, my dad <laughs> was around in the Richmond scene. He played in a couple of bands in college, and then he actually plays banjo and guitar. He was, plays old-time music now. Um, so there's a lot, like, family gatherings would always kind of descend into <laughs> old-time jam sessions sure. bef- sooner rather than later. That's and sweet. Miles is dead also. Yeah, my dad's an audio engineer. Um, and an exceptional guitarist in his own right. Cool. So, yeah. In in Richmond as well? Uh, right outside D.C., actually. Okay. Yeah. Cool. And you meant, what were you going to say? Oh, I don't know. I was just going to say, like, Noma and I have, like, a lot of history. Like, we grew up playing in a band together. Um, and, yeah, and Jacob actually, he was, he came back and, like, to our middle school and did this music program that, like, helped Noma and I start oh, I this other band. Cool, cool. And, it, like, it was, yeah, he's, he had graduated and he was in high school and like he just came back and like helped us start this other band manager that we play in. Yeah. Nice. Kind of come full circle now. We're playing. And now, yeah. Together. Yeah, right on. Really yeah. <laughs> for for you two, I, I know that the record um was recorded in, in Nashville, correct? Mm-hmm. Um with with just you two, right? As far as yeah. as far as yeah. this setup People of the, the band, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So how did that dynamic work with him being the I don't know, the the more music nerd and you being the gut <laughs> the gut player? Yeah. I guess um, before we recorded, I was only playing solo, and all the songs right were written just to play solo. Yeah, yeah. And then our friend Colin Pastor, who was the engineer and mixed it and produced it, um, he invited us to come and record with him. And we wrote all the other parts in a week before okay, recording. Okay, cool, cool. And so we, none of them had been played live <laughs> ever before we made this, the album. Yeah, we were lucky that uh, Colin graduated from Berkeley and some of his classmates also lived in Nashville. So he had some like really exceptional uh, players who were just his friends who were willing to play on the record for us. Um, and yeah, we rehearsed like three times and then cut cool. the album yeah. in a day. That's so. sweet. That's sweet. Yeah. When you were like running people through parts, did you just make them look at your fingers? Like, okay, so you're going to be doing this thing now and this thing now? That's or not even helpful because I'm, I'm playing an alternate tuning. Oh, right so on. Like, I remember you saying that. the yeah. formation is like this and it's a chord. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so um, yeah, it's helpful that they were all educated because I'm so just, like, it. lagging behind in that area. <laughs> oh, I don't think so. I think it's just different perspectives, maybe. Sure. <laughs> uh, thank you guys again very much for coming out. You can roll into your next song when, whenever you're ready. Why don't you take a second? Jeez, my capo fell on this curly cord, and it went down like a... Like yeah, a I saw slide. that slide down. That's very beautiful. Very weird. A water slide. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see. All right. I'm 
You're watching Audio Tree Live. We're in the studio with Lucy Dacus. So I was cued into the a little bit about the songwriting process, something to do with walks. Would you explain that to me? <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much the whole. Okay, <laughs> that's the whole thing. I, I go on walks. Um, yeah, I haven't really ever sat down to like write a song or been like, I should write a song about this. Yeah. It's usually I'm like alone walking and it just starts kind of happening. Mm -hmm. And I have to either remember it or I like put it on my phone or I write it down and eventually it becomes a song. Sometimes it takes about the length of the song to actually write the song. Okay, like it sure. just all comes out in one, you know, two minutes yeah, or something. Yeah. And other times maybe you revisit it or like you have pieces of it all yeah. together and then you like put them together. Yeah, like later. sometimes I've written like one line and it gets put in a song like three years later. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. Do you find that that's something that has like trickled over from your day solo and just like a process that you've held on to or yeah it's never changed because i don't really have control over it like i yeah, would yeah. i probably would change it if i could if you but could I'd, like tried to sit down and just write a song mm -hmm. and it's always like so forced and weird so i just just keep taking walks right v uh, forced and weird in what way you just mean that it's not as you just don't feel like it's as genuine or, or it doesn't come out as honest as you want it to be it or might something be like that genuine and honest like to somebody else but sure. to me it's like this isn't subtle. This is too. This is too much. I'll think like this is too nostalgic, or um, I don't know, too saccharine. Like the the action of trying to write it takes away from the genuineness, just to me. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, that makes sense. I mean, you're just saying that even uh, you're just in a different headspace, and you need to be in the proper headspace to to write in the way that you like to write? Yeah. In in terms of like autobiography, there's a uh, on or in Map on a Wall, you reference uh, pigeon feet. I was actually uh, born like super pigeon toed. I had to wear these stupid shoes when I was a tiny, tiny kid. Oh. So it stuck out to me. I'm just curious if um, that's like to what extent your music is autobiographical or your lyrics are autobiographical. Yeah. I mean, it's got to be if it's like within me and sure. coming out. Though, like I relate to the music after it's written the way that anybody relates to it. Sure, like sure. when you listen to a song, you're like, that's me or that's somebody I know. So relating to it is an equal process to anybody else. Right. Except for the fact that I wrote it and it came from me. Right. Um, yeah. So I guess it's like more close to my life than anyone else's. But I, I feel see like it's mean. pretty equal still. Yeah. Right on. And and then that would be a goal of yours, right? To To have it be broad enough like you're saying subtle enough that people can relate to it but also about you or, or personal enough that it's about you yeah right on uh as far as you guys go does she tell you what all the songs are about or do or just say play these parts sometimes she'll tell us a little bit uh sometimes it's like pretty obvious from the lyrical lyrics themselves and like from knowing her i suppose yeah um i'm kind of like i think Maybe part of why Lucy and I work well together is because I tend to come at things from the exact opposite side. Like, oh, or cool. if I listen to an album or anything, like the lyrics are usually the last thing that I'll hear, which is kind of funny, like being in this band where the lyrics are so great and so important. But, yeah, yeah. Uh, that means that, like, for me, I'm just thinking about like texture and like the purely like musical side of things. So I think that it kind of ends up val balancing pretty well. Right on. Yeah, top down and bottom up or something like that yeah. where you guys mm -hmm. end up meeting in the middle. Yeah, and the, the newer songs that? are being written more collaboratively. So it's, it's okay. fun to have a hand in that. <laughs> yeah, this record was, you know, compiled of all of Lucy's sort of solo songs. Yes. Um, and so this, this next record that the five of us have been working on is definitely a lot more collaborative. And, um, you know, she'll still come to us with the original, you know, solo sort of arrangement of it, but we'll... You know, we'll all be sort of uh, willing to, you know, take some some leaps of faith to, yeah, yeah, you know, arrange liberties it. within her arrangements. Yeah, exactly. Cool. Very cool. I don't know. Like the most recent one, we like you just like brought in the essence of the song and kind of no arrangement a little bit. Yeah, just like the chords and lyrics. Yeah, and then we just we arranged it. Yeah, we built the dynamics around it. Very cool. It's very cool to see that process developing with you guys, and I'm sure that's an interesting feat from your perspective, not having to have as long of walks possibly to uh, <laughs> <Yeah>, <laughs> think of it all. Yeah, it's about the equal. Like I, <laughs> if it's finished to me, then I can bring it in. Okay. It's, but yeah, it's pretty much the same <laughs> situation for every song. <laughs> cool. Cool. Okay. Thanks for sharing, guys. You can go on to your next one when you're ready. Mm -hmm. 
You got yourself a bunch of bad habits Not hard to see that love is a weakness Seems to me the way you want to stand it Is that you're never gonna make it happen Watching Audio Tree Live, we're in the studio with Lucy Dacus. You guys can get ready to go on your next one, and I will say that 2016's No Burden is out now. You can get it. They're on tour for a few more days, um, Fort Wayne, Indiana tonight, and Urbana, Illinois in April. And you can also catch them at Lollapalooza this year, which is freaking awesome. Congratulations. I'm curious, how does that uh, how does that process work? Do they, like, do you get an email? It's like, congratulations. I mean, yeah. I don't know. That's, that's it? Yeah. I okay. mean, our, like, our manager helps. Pitched it. Yeah, yeah of course. I don't know if they just go and listen to everything and pick you know, <laughs> everything like, in the world just everything in the world and be like you've been accepted like yeah, the, yeah. like Pulitzer Prize yes. Pulitzer Prize it's like you don't even know you're nominated or anything yeah yeah so but still crazy yeah still crazy like, that's amazing I, I went in 2012 and 13 cool and just like ah like 
I graduated high school and having a crazy time. <laughs> and so it's just going to be so weird to be a part of it. Yeah, you guys are going to have to check out like the Perry's tent and see a lot of kids who are doing Molly for the first time vomiting. Yeah. It's I a went, really fun thing. <laughs> I, I, we went, I did not take Molly, but someone brought in, <laughs> I don't know how they snuck this in, a huge plate of multicolored jello shots. Like... You have to sneak things in. Yeah. How did that? It that was seems like this really big hard. Of like tiny, like small containers. Uh huh. And like a serrated <laughs> plate. Maybe they like broke uh. it down. Like brought in the tiny. Yeah. Put yeah. Put them in a bunch of different pockets. Yeah. And but that's not why you should plate. go to Lollapalooza. No, no, I feel like definitely maybe we not. shouldn't. Yeah. Nobody. <laughs> drugs and alcohol are not the reason to go to music festival. Check out this band and other awesome bands. True. You can take it away when you're ready.
Watching Audio Tree Live, we're in the studio with Lucy Dacus. So you guys have spoken very highly of the Richmond scene, bunch of cool bands, supportive community. I'm also curious about, due to its proximity to DC, do you see like any political leanings leaking into the scene at all, whether that's political bands or like bands involved with activism, things like that? Yeah, a little bit. I wish it was happening more. Okay, um, sure. I mean, not as much in the music, as much as just Richmond on the whole, people. definitely on the whole, like um, the people in the community are very politically minded. Richmond was like the capital of the Confederacy yeah. and there's still all these monuments and artifacts that are telling of that and tourism that's dependent on that. Right. And so there's this huge backlash and there's still the small faction of people that, you know, have Confederate flags in of front course. of our art museum. But um, yeah, it's, Definitely, maybe not directly, like, I'm talking about history and, like, current events, but kind of the the vibe is that people, I don't know, are more open-minded and caring of each other and supportive of, like, productive, creative pursuits. Right, right. So almost reactionary to the history, right? Even if they're not yeah. directly fighting against it, it's influenced them to have these more open perspectives. I mean, yep. there is. I mean, there are a lot of different cultures like coming head to head, kind of like you know, there are the people who wave Confederate flags out in front of the art museum, right? Then the people who come to protest them, yeah. And then there's um, like pro life people protesting right across the street, and then people protesting them. Yeah. And this just happens every week. Wow, like mm -hmm. a lot of days. Yeah. Interesting. Other other perspectives on that, or y yeah, I feel like there are a fair amount of bands too that that do speak out. Um, be it in their music or just in uh, their activism. No sure. BS. No BS Brass. Yeah, yeah right on. Yeah, those um, guys are awesome. Yeah, Brass Knuckles, really powerful record. And uh, Lobo Marino is another group um, who's just incredibly environmentally conscious um, yeah. and are constantly protesting the uh, sort of the, the fronts that uh, some major corporations like Dominion Power are making in uh, sort of Lobo Marino. And, and a lot of groups with them are trying to preserve the James River, which is such a, an important and integral part of Richmond. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. And trying to, you know, keep the environment clean and, and progressive. Um, 
and kind and of then like yeah. events like we got a rock the vote event that event that no man tristan's band manatree played in this band avers there's a lot of activism a lot of we know a lot of people that are voting for bernie okay cool go out and march about it and talk about it and yeah call yeah about yeah it and whatever. yeah so even if it's just between tracks not necessarily that their record is called go bernie but that they're yeah. like talking about it <laughs> yeah. in between yeah very cool sweet okay guys uh why don't you take away with your last one again get no burden and check them out uh Lollapalooza. Yeah, we cool. My friends saying things that don't mean I Audio Tree Live. We've been in the studio with Lucy Dacus. Get No Burden, which is out now, and check them out on tour. I will have to show you guys afterwards. I found this really funny review when doing research that referred to the record as No Load and called that song I Would Not Like to Be Amusing Any Longer. I assume Wait. it's like some translation issue or yeah, something. Yeah, that had to be. Yeah, I'll show you it later, but it's, yeah. re it's really funny. There's also <laughs> no like... Load. No Load. Yeah, no and, like to be amusing and direct address as familiar location. There's like some other really <laughs> yeah. funny things. Anyway, thank you very much for performing for us and hanging out. Thank, thank you, you for having thank us. Thank you so much. And thanks to awesome people in the studio. Yeah. Yeah. Sound engineers, <laughs> camera and lighting crew for hooking it up, and viewers, thanks for watching. You can support the band by downloading the session when it comes out in a couple of weeks and send a shout by social media to us or the band if you just want to connect. From all of us here at the Audio Tree Studios, thanks for tuning in. Goodbye. Thank you.